Um, so uh, I have a, a company which puts me in a little bit different position from um, people who do academic research. It means that um, I don't have the luxury of, of deciding to do some research and hoping that after 10 years it will work. Um, it means that I probably have two years, three years to make something work. And so um, I, when I started Dabble two years ago, I looked around at different things and I'd worked on a number of search systems, um, both at Berkeley as a master's student and also uh, after leaving the master's program at Sims um, and going to a couple of companies and then deciding to start my own. Um, in fact, just as an aside, last week I was with um, a former uh, Sims colleague, a former master's student, and he went on to, to eBay and now he's at Yahoo and we were kind of lamenting the fact that um, Sims people or iSchool people um, always end up back in search. Um, you know, you go out and you try to address some other problem. I went out and tried to address media and sharing and, uh, and ended up back in search. Um, you just can't escape it. You're, you're stuck forever. So um, anyway, I would argue that the question, um, at least right now, for building something that a lot of people can use in, um, a, uh, in a very practical level, um, that, the, that the question at hand is not really search so much as discovery. I think about 20% of the time based on um, the way that people, I see people using Dabble and other sites, about 20% of the time they're coming to do search. The problem is, is that um, you know, you're, you're doing this thing, you're finding the needle in the haystack, but it's not like web search, right? People go to Google and they type in Yahoo. And it's because they're, they don't know how to put yahoo.com in the address bar. Um, so it's just easier to do that and then click through. Um, and vice versa, they go to Yahoo and put in Google. And it, it's, you know, video search or, or rich media search is, is really different. People are looking for something that they haven't seen before. And so they don't really know what to put in. They might put in the word dog, but they might you know, just be looking for something that is interesting and fun. So it's really a hard problem. Um, I think that there are about 40 million clips online that have come up in the last couple of years, um, along with the very small number that existed before two years ago. And right now there's 200,000 clips a day going up. So it's a, even 1% of that is just beyond your ability to deal with in terms of, of searching and watching video. Um, there's a lot of sites, um, both traditional media sites as well as all of these, um, most of which are, are new sites um, that have come up in the past two years. There's actually 350 hosters or more. Um, and there's 30,000 feeds that are out there as well that people are self-publishing. So it's a, it's a lot to go through. Um, so these are the reasons why I think discovery is um, a much more important problem in this space. Um, media is really hard to crack, as all the folks who were just up here talking about um, in their various research projects, um, it's really difficult to get into it um, and do something with it. And, and I think the guy who was up here before me is probably right. Um, it, image search is, much better, um, is a much better problem for people who are trying to attack the visual matching issue than people who want to find interesting video to watch or solve some goal that they have around finding a particular video. Um, People, as I said, people typically watch media one time. Um, they don't usually rewatch, so that thing where you would go to Google and type in Yahoo is, you know, not going to happen. I mean, people don't go and usually look for that, you know, put in the same terms necessarily. Um, and it's not really about a TV style navigation either, um, the discovery issue. You don't really want to go and just, you know, it, it's not about time or location really. I mean, you need the URL as a location, but you don't care what channel it's on. You just want to find it on the internet and you want to find it um, whenever you're looking, not because it's scheduled for, you know, Tuesday night at 8.30 because some programmer at NBC told you to watch it at that time. Um, and I, obviously context is really important. If I'm looking for a fly fishing video and you give me a video that is about how to make brownies, I'm going to be really dissatisfied and that's why I actually am also of the opinion that um, 
that rating systems aren't so great because if you mismatch um, the the result of either the discovery or browsing experience or direct search, you will end up with people who will um, comment very differently on the video. And so that's why recommendations matter. Um, so there's a number of ways that people are working on searching rich media. Some people are taking audio transcripts and um, and searching that. I think that if, you, if that's all you do, it leads to a very flat type of search. Imagine taking all the descriptions and just doing keyword matching. You may know that 50,000 people or 50,000 videos have someone in the video saying the words George Bush, but you really don't know which ones are the most relevant or contextually match your goals um, or maybe your community or your situation. Um, Another thing that people are doing is the visual matching, um, and as um, the RIA example points out, you know, RIA started as a company that wanted to match faces in photos. They started a year and a half ago is when they launched, and they were never really able to make that work. So they switched to shopping because people were, were you know, they, the lesson that they learned basically was that we are very tuned in as human beings, and we have gazillions of years of, um, of uh, programming behind us um, that make us very, very picky about face matching. We want it to be exact all the time because we're really good at it. But we don't really care if the pair of shoes doesn't quite match. If it's almost there, that's good enough. And so it, it works really well as a, as a shopping site. Um, so they switched the business model. Um, another thing that people can do is, is search into the header metadata. Um, and that, of course, is, leaves the search system restricted to just the metadata that could be collected at the time of capture or editing and was put in by the people who created the media. Um, keyword matching um, of, of um, typical metadata is another way that, that some sites do search. And finally, um, gestural, contextual, tempor temporal, geolocational types of search um, are um, are most interesting to me. So that's what the, the route that I chose. Um, I think it's, it's actually the best way to go because rather than trying to brute force the images or the audio or what it is that people want in some automated way, I cut right to the chase and went to the people and said, how do you understand this media? You tell me in some way or another and then I'll take that information and turn it into something useful. So, um, so I think um, generally, uh, as I look at the discovery issue, that gestures are, are most important. A gesture, um, just in case anybody doesn't understand that, that term, um, a gesture is, um, for example, a link. So if a blogger makes a link to another blog post from somebody else, that link can be counted. It can be counted in Google's PageRank alg algorithm. It can be counted at Technorati or other blog search services. and um, and so they're very useful, um, and obviously people have been using them for a while, but I think there's a lot more gestures around rich media that are interesting. So um, um, that said, I mean, there's, there's what, the fact that somebody watched a video, especially if people are only watching things one time, um, if they get a list of, of results or, or a, a subset of browsable material and they choose one over some others, um, that might be a useful gesture. There's sharing and playlisting, grouping videos. Um, it, there's the velocity that um, over time that video is being watched by a large number of people. The location of that media relative to the location of the person who's trying to get some media. Um, there's the age of the gestures or the media. Collecting and saving, blogging, as I mentioned, um, the fact that somebody would make the effort to create that link is important, and it and it uh, I think is a recognizable gesture. Um, improving the data, if somebody comes along and adds more data, if they bookmark something in Delicious and add additional tags, it's it's an interesting gesture, and there's context in the tags. Um, the frequency of activity around that media, the distance um, between the media and another piece of media, more, in other words, kind of a more like this kind of model. And, um, and then the, the interest in your network or in um, topic-based networks or the network as a whole. Um, so because of that, I'm, I've been working on algorithms that deal with the, the gestures and, and are created or optimized around the concept of discovery. 
Um, and so the gestures are weighted. Um, recommendations are, are weighted heavily um, depending on the context and, and all of the situations around the gestures that I just listed. Um, I also think it's really interesting for finding more like this. Um, and that, that can go in both directions. It may be more like this in terms of what you want or what your group wants, but it may also be around finding spam. Um, because if you know something is spam, you could find everything else that's like it and, and, and do more with that. And then, of course, there's, there's context. Um, so that's it. That's, uh, that's what I'm looking at.